something awful is coming. Hi, Lily. How are you doing? Good. How are you going? I'm good, thanks. Just before we start, I just, I just one sec. Um, chew and chew. <laughs> Sorry. So, so no, how, I how, to... sorry oh because chew and chew that i do that oh my god <laughs> a, long, a long time ago no? <laughs> i was like do you know what i thought i was like it's really familiar i remember doing that on i'm like i used to do it when i did my first tv show that was an american accent and that used to be what i did all the time oh, that was what and you actually I... did yeah actually did used to do that when trying to get my mouth around the American accent. I'd be like, chew and chew and be like rubber baby buggy bubbers. Anyway, that was that was a bizarre experience. I was like I just thought I was a good way to, to start the interview. 7:30. It's 7 30 in the morning here. Yeah, yeah. And I was gonna say wake up. I hope you had plenty of coffee over there. Yeah. I'm due for another one. <laughs> So listen, so I mean, first of all, I want to just want to talk a little bit about the title of the film, because it's kind of, it might be misleading for people who who haven't seen the trailer or don't know what the film's about. So it, it, it kind of relates to the fact that truth is no longer the great monolith that underpins the world, power is. So kind of, just very briefly, can you set the scene, what your character does and what, what, what kind of goes on in the film yeah. without giving any spoilers away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we dropped into the world of this self-loathing interviewer who has fallen from grace in the journalist world from for ethical misconduct. She's retreated home to her darling, beautiful parents' mansion, and basically now she's clawing her way back to relevance, uh, at no matter what the t- what it takes, and basically stealing other people's stories and manipulating them to make her own truth basically and yeah and it's it's, it's, no, it's, it's great i love it it's uh it's very different to uh, people who are probably very familiar with you in evil that is very similar i mean it's, it's, it's claustrophobic it's very very different um what was it about this project i mean it's, it's a typical question what was it about this project that attracted you because i imagine it's quite a it's one of those projects that you think mm, should i do this or not because it is it's a great challenge but at the same time do i know mm-hmm. what i'm letting myself in for you know Oh, definitely. And like, I I just finished Evil Dead. And then it was like this beautiful script that was so Moorish and so wonderful to read, which again, it's so different. You can read a script and it can be so amazing, but to actually have to embody that and do that and also shoot it within the constraints. It was through like South Australian Film Corp, New New, New Voices program. And so basically it's like, what I loved is it was a high conceptual piece, stripped back budget. and instead of like Lucy Campbell's script, which was so tight and wonderful and had the edit in it because they built the film from the budget in a sense of like, right. that was the challenge. So ultimately I just knew every department was taking the challenge and to be a part of that is really exciting after being on like a big, you know, monster shoot like Evil Dead. It was just to go from the full physical and large into like introspectively like passive and small, but yeah, obviously absolutely terrified uh the part of me that was going to just have this situation where I just bore people for an hour and a half and they unfortunately have to listen to me so um it was yeah it's always a risk it's always a gamble but it's the best exercise to realize you can't control what other people think mm-hmm. um, I mean actors typically we describe them as storytellers but at the same time here you obviously you, you've got to keep the audience involved and intrigued all the time but you're also half of the film very much listening to the stories being told. So that in itself is must have been complicated to, to kind of keep your audience intrigued, watching you listening to totally. a story being told to you, no? Totally. Sometimes you realize listening. Also, like when you strip back uh, another person, like another actor, like the body language, it's like a second language. It's like, whereas it's just you're watching my eyes see the visuals and weirdly you're just like, it's quite like a, it was quite a psychedelic experience. First and foremost, listening that long without anything in front of you, your imagination would, by the end, I'd sometimes have a bit of like snow vision or not be able to quite focus things in. It was like after like, you know, six hours of doing it mm. um, into the day, you just don't turn around on anyone else and the camera's on you in your one location. And and we would like let this, like the set go fully quiet before take doing a scene and doing a take. So it was just to actually feel alone and the noise cancelling headphones. And then the, it was, it, yeah, sometimes I would feel like I'm going to have like a little mini panic attack. Um, 
but yeah it's it's such a weird thing to not be able to ever look at a camera to listen to not have anyone else to cut to and to just constantly be absorbing and trying to depict your imagination on your face like it was quite a bizarre experience mm -hmm. but, yeah. but i imagine at the same time i mean you're alone most of the time with the exception of the uh, the very long neck t uh, tortoise but um I imagine a lot of the time was spent with the director of photography. Did you kind of, was he, was he very on hands with you, hands on with you to make sure that yeah. you know exactly what was going in the frame to keep everything, even if it's just you sat there watching kind of the audio files going yeah. by, were you very Definitely. kind of hands on together? Yeah, for sure. And also like being like, all right, well, this is the budget. This is the timing. So this is the only shot for this. Or like, then we're going to just do one tight on the headphone and that's it. And you're like, and it goes for 10 minutes of whatever, one take or whatever. But um, yeah, like at one point there's like the ex that exposure at the end where like she goes into the bathroom after smashing um, the brick that you see in the trailer. Mm -hmm. um, and that was all one do -si do all of that shot because again, to be able to cover what we needed to do, it was like, there's the reveal, then I walk back, then a body double comes. It was just like, I'm not doing spoilers. Oh, no, 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 yeah. No, but I was there. Yeah, that was just uh, wow, amazing. That I was just, I kept, I was kept trying to figure out in my head how you, how you pulled it all off. Yeah. I could sit down and then grab the recorder, but then the recorder was a body double grabbing it, and then I would run around the camera to dosi do, and then I would reveal as as the next step of whatever. Oh, it oh it's fantastic. At the same yeah. time, um, I mean, it, it takes us down this really dark rabbit hole. But this, I was reading that um, Lucy Campbell, the scriptwriter said that the, her script mentors took her out of her comfort zone to really kind of see how far they could go with the film. Did they do that with you too? Or did you do that with yourself? Do you, what do you mean? Like in regards to once the production? Start, to take a deep dive into the darkest possible areas of this, this kind of, these kind of podcasts or these kind of themes just to see kind of yeah. how dark and strange you could go and how dark and strange the film could go. Yeah, and also like um, this deep level of of wanting to exist online and be someone and do something and that be noteworthy and have credibility and all of these feelings, which I think even like doing this as an actor, I'm just like, oh God, like, do I want to have all of these things? Am I doing this well? And it was like to sit in this constant state of like being in a place to interview people and to have this like narcissism, like sort of ruminate around your body in that sense was quite bizarre like that was quite a bit of a like ick in a way like thinking yeah. about social media presence thinking about just having this online um presence and fake voice and like it was just it was quite nauseating in that sense because I think there was just a lot of truth in it whether you're an, in an investigative like reporter or you know clickbait podcast whatever or you're just a banter queen on on your podcast it's like mm -hmm. either way it's making lots of sounds that are just taking up space so by the end i feel like that part i'm true and true i'm true <laughs> and true and true and listen to me i've got a good way of just taking us whispering <laughs> yeah but then I'm I'm mean, talking podcasts and stuff and kind of like a whole so many podcasts are so popular was that is that something that you you were kind of into especially these kind of like the uh, beyond believable podcasts are those things that you'd listen to or was that something that you really kind of yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, you know, yeah. the old like crime podcast for sure. Or like, you know, I hear fear, so scary stories, or like, you know, um anatomy of a murder, or like the moths, or just like, yeah, it's just spooky, spooky stories. I like it in a way that that's what also monolith felt like for me. It's just like us trying to tell you a story, sit you down and just like use this audio format that that everyone can listen to an hour and a half podcast, you know? So it was like, why can't we do this also in a film mm -hmm. where you just go down micro budget and just be like, and just tell them a story and mm -hmm. just make them listen and, and test patience in a different format. Oh, definitely worse because but just speaking into my microphone, I got you get chills from seeing the the, the metal the metal flag in the film. Totally, totally. Yeah. Listen, just so just to finish off, I mean, obviously you you done it, uh, Evil Dead just previously. That's right, no. So mm -hmm. um, this film, there's not particularly that much kind of eekiness in there, but there is there is one specifically ucky moment which I don't want to give too much away, but mm -hmm. that to me f looks maybe even tougher than the evil dead movie because it um, it just looked like you must have been literally bricking it yeah yeah it was 
I don't know how you pulled it off. I mean, was that thing actually? Huh? Was that thing actually that actually that most of that actually come out of you, or was it because it didn't look like a camera trick in any way at all? Yeah, it was. There was a mouth rig, a mouth guard, a retractable, like you know, like retractable knives in a sense. Uh, and then a tiny bit of filling in, but it was it was disgusting. Matt Besley, the director, just can't even by the sound of someone making like sort of gagging or like vomit sound was just like one more take. He could barely <laughs> look at it. I was like, you're not even doing it, man. But he did really prepare my ability to be able to like manipulate my nervous system, which was it becomes like dancing in a way. But yeah, that was disgusting. And then the other by the end of the film. I'm rolling around in Wagyu, Wagyu feces of cows. What a perfect, <laughs> perfect moment to, to was... end this interview. Listen, Lily, it's been really good to speak to you. <laughs> I wish you the best of luck with the film. It's fantastic. Yeah. I'm sure people are going to love it. And I uh, hope to speak to you again sometime soon. Yes, definitely. Go get it's another time. coffee quick. <laughs> yes, I will. It's time. All right. Take care of yourself. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Take care. Bye yeah. now. I listened to the new episode and you sounded kind of messed up. I really got under your skin, haven't I? Please, please help me. I can't keep living like this, please. I want to tell you a story. All you have to do is listen.